Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jim Morris. Thank you. I don't care who you are. I look pretty sexy in that video, don't I? <laughs> it's amazing what makeup will do for you. You know, remember who you are. That's the theme of my talk this morning. The first time I heard that, I was 15 years old. Remember who you are. At 15, I didn't really get it, though. I thought remember who you are was some odd saying that I'd never heard before, but it came from my grandfather. My grandfather's name was Ernest Morris, six foot three, 225 pounds, and filled with integrity. The best person I've ever known in my life to this day. He taught me everything there is to know about life. He taught me how to treat women. He taught me how to handle my money. He taught me how to behave in public, behave in private. He taught me about life, which is very important for me because as my dad's dad, he taught me things that my dad never taught me. My dad always told me I wasn't good enough to do this or I wasn't good enough to do that. And in high school, my football coach said, you'll never be a baseball player, you need to quit right now. Your future is to be a football player. Baseball is out of the question. Why, when I got out of high school, we had to take those tests to see what kind of college material we were. SATs, ACTs. When those scores came back, my guidance counselor stopped me in the hallway. And he said, Jimmy, what do you plan on doing with your life? And I said, I'm going to be a baseball player. Everybody knows that. He said, man, I hope so, because you're too stupid to go to college. <laughs> this was my high school counselor. He's supposed to help me mold my future. Well, he's not a high school counselor anymore. He works in a movie rental store. He's renting the movie about my life to other people. But we lived with my grandparents. We moved back to Brownwood, Texas when I was 15. And during the ages of 15, 16, and 17, my grandfather taught me a lot. He had a menswear store in Brownwood, Texas, out in the middle of nowhere. But people like Gene Autry would come in from California and buy suits from him. He knew everybody. Most honest person I'd ever seen in my life. Most faith-filled person I'd ever seen in my life. He was either at work or at church every day of his life. And he did things for people that nobody else would do. He would pay bills for people that couldn't afford it. He would buy Thanksgiving dinners for families that couldn't afford anything for their kids. He'd even buy Christmas presents for families that couldn't afford anything for their kids. He wanted everybody to have the American dream. And he lived that way every day. I wanted to be like that. My only problem was that I was a teenager. And I had a few things to learn before I got there. And so as I got out of high school and I had my mind set on baseball, some very important things started happening. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I didn't have the grades. I didn't have a plan, really, except baseball. And, you know, to be a baseball player takes a lot, a lot of work and a lot of heart and a lot of luck. At this point in time, my high school team didn't even have a baseball team. We had football. And so every day I'd walk out of my grandfather's house. He would say, remember who you are. Remember who you are. Well, my grandfather knew and worked with everybody, and I watched the way he worked with people integrity, honesty, faith. And so I thought, remember who you are meant remember that you're my grandson, and if you embarrass me in any way, I will kill you. <laughs> it took me until my 30s, and I had kids of my own, and I taught kids, and I was responsible for all these kids, to realize remember who you are is simple. Remember who you are simply means don't do anything you wouldn't have anybody see you do at any time. Have honesty, have integrity. Never give up. Always be a positive role model. Remember who you are has been my standard ever since. Because I graduated from high school, I had no college to go to. Something very important happened in my life. My grandfather developed ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Now being six foot three, 225 pounds, I watched this powerful, powerful man shrivel up to less than 100 pounds, curled up in a fetal position in a hospital bed in less than 18 months. And I didn't understand this disease. It's a disease in which the nerves quit firing so the muscles can't move. Eventually you suffocate and die because your lungs will not move in and out. And I thought, how can somebody who does everything possible for everybody he's ever met in his life have something so devastating? He's never done anything but positive things for everybody. I didn't get it. I thought it wasn't fair. 
At this time, I was 18 and graduating. I watched my grandfather, and the last time he went to church, I carried him in. It was an amazing thing because he never complained about the disease one time. He didn't have to. He had an 18-year-old grandson ready to do that for him. But he never complained about the pain. He never complained about the loss of mobility. His faith carried him through. The last time I saw my grandfather alive was in the fall of 1982 in a hospital room. He and I were in the room by ourselves. He couldn't move, but he could still speak because he had oxygen. He could speak in raspy breaths. And I looked down at him, 18 years old, with my whole life in front of me. And I looked down at my grandfather and I said, this is not fair. This, why has this happened to you? Why didn't somebody who deserve it get this disease? Why did it have to be you? And for the next 20 minutes, he taught me about life. And he taught me everything that I carry with me to this day. He looked up at me and he said, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are that you can change one thing about life? Your job is to go out and do everything you possibly can every single day. You go out and achieve everything you can because you don't know when your last day is going to be. You live every day like it's the last day you'll ever have on this earth. And then he started talking to me about honesty and integrity and standing up for what is right. He taught me how to chase dreams. He said, your whole life is in front of you. I don't care if you're a baseball player or not. Your job is to go out and let people see you live right. Your job is to go out and do right. Chase everything you possibly can, run through every door of opportunity you can, and don't look back. Never give up and don't give in. My grandfather, Ernest Morris, was my mentor. I love him to this day. Five hours after I left that room, he died. I've never seen that many people at a funeral in my life. He actually did know everybody. Our church was full, the parking lot was full, there were speakers in the parking lot, there were speakers in all the classrooms, the cafeteria, everywhere. People couldn't even get in the church. He knew and stood for what is right. An amazing man. After I got out of high school, I got drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers, and through six years of misery, I had six surgeries and I ended up quitting baseball at the age of 24. It didn't work for me. My dream was done. It was the only thing I ever focused on. I didn't care about grades. I wanted to be a baseball player. Well, I'm in Dr. Andrews' office in Birmingham, Alabama at 24. And he said, Jimmy, we can fix you up again. We can do another surgery, but the choice is yours. We'll do whatever it is you want. And I said, Doc, I think it's time for me to grow up. I need to grow up. It's time for me to go home and go back to school. I need to get an education. I need to figure out what dreams really are. I need to find somebody and get married. I need to start a family and have kids. I need to buy a dog. He said, that is a fantastic plan. Start with a dog. 